If you're a fan of uber soft meat and tomato based stews, well this Filipino mechado is the dish for you. So before we begin and before I get called out online, a traditional mechado was usually made with cuts of beef that weren't very tender. This is an old recipe, so I'm pretty sure that the beef quality in the Philippines back then, when planes weren't invented yet, wasn't great. We weren't really known for our cattle industry and still aren't. So to give the dish more flavor, they would stick pork back fat into the beef, and these would end up looking like little beef candles. Weird, I know. Hence the name. Mecha meaning candle wick in Spanish, and also mechar also means to lard something. Two birds, one stone. Go figure. If you have good quality beef with generous fat in it, you can skip this step. I'm using some chuck here and some short rib. Short ribs will just bring this stew to a whole new level. You can also use cuts of round or brisket. To keep it real, we are gonna fry this in some lard. Here are the other ingredients you will need. Some lemons, dark soy sauce, frozen peas, Carrots, beef, potatoes, bell peppers, bay leaves, whole canned tomatoes, onions, and beef broth. Not in picture, fish sauce, pepper, olive oil, and garlic. Couldn't fit all of that on the board. First thing we want to do is cut up our meat into three inch chunks. For the short ribs, just slice them between the bones. We're gonna season this with some soy sauce, lemon juice, and pepper. Mix it all together and leave this out for two hours. Now we're not looking for this marinade to completely cover the beef, just to really season it slowly. While waiting on that, let's get our vegetables ready. Peel both your carrots and potatoes. You don't have to remove all of the skin. You can keep some of it on if you want to and then cube them up. Dice up one large white onion and mince five cloves of garlic. For our bell pepper, the three colors are really just more for plating. Cut them up, clean the inside, make sure to remove the bitter white pith and cube them up. Once your beef is ready, get a large Dutch oven or a pot out, add in your melted lard and sear your beef in two batches, about two minutes per side, just to generate some nice color and render some fat. Make sure not to overcrowd the pot. Remove all the beef and toss in your carrots and potatoes to make sure they grab all that flavor. We're only gonna cook this for five minutes because we just wanna give them color, um, but make sure that you don't cook them all the way through. Throw in your onions and garlic and cook them for three minutes until fragrant. Now at this point, I like using canned whole tomatoes, the same kind you would use to make tomato sauce. However, most people will actually use tomato sauce. My issue with that is that I don't know what brand you buy, so the flavor might vary greatly depending on where you live in the world. So just use whole canned tomatoes in their juices, and if you're used to something a little sweeter, you can always add some sugar, and if you want more acid, you can always add more lemon juice or vinegar. It really comes down to your flavor profile and what you enjoy eating. Stew this down for about five minutes before adding some beef broth. Bring it to a simmer, add in a couple of bay leaves, your meat, the soy marinade, and enough water to cover the beef. Make sure this is simmering before covering it and we're gonna cook this down for about two hours. Since we have to wait two hours, what's the difference you may ask between other Filipino tomato and meat-based stews? Mechado, caldereta, menudo, afritada. Here is a cheat sheet. Mechado, well, the one we're making now, is different because of the larding of the beef, soy sauce, and the acid used, usually vinegar or citrus. Caldereta, from the Spanish word for cauldron, was originally made with goat, and you will usually find some liver in there. Menudo, from the Spanish small, features small bits of meat, liver, and raisins. Finally, afritada, from the Spanish for fry, is usually a chicken dish and is, well, sauteed more than it is stewed. At this point, the sauce should look deeper and more flavorful. However, it may still be a little liquid. So we add in our carrots and potatoes for the last 30 minutes of the cook. Their starch should help thicken this a little further. You can also skim off some extra fat or oil during this step if you want. After 30 minutes, our peas and peppers go in. 
Simmer for five minutes before doing some final adjustments by adding some fish sauce and cracked black pepper. The base of your seasoning will come in at this point. You'll see that the meat should be spoon tender and if you just look at that short rib, the meat will just slide right off. You know you've done a good job if you can somehow impress your mother-in-law. <laughs> what do you love? <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> this part here? Yeah. The oil. The meat and that one time they put in the rice. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So, mm, let's eat again. <laughs> the rice is it's true. It's true. <laughs>